<laughs> Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to this little demonstration. So, um, as you probably all know, my name is Renata, and um, I'm going to show you today how to make various kinetic components. So, what I'll focus on in the demo is um, bringing your attention to the tools that are needed and also showing you various types of kinetic connections that you can make rather than making finished pieces. I just want to clarify that. I do have some um, samples here that I would like to send around so, so you can get um, an idea of what a kinetic component is. It's basically anything that moves and it can go as simple as um, using jump rings. If you basically connect two components with a jump ring, there is a movement and it is kinetic. But then, you know, you can also make um, things that spin, like on this piece here. I'll send that around. Take it out of my hand, otherwise I'll just sit here and play. <laughs> <laughs> send these, and when, say that one is, that one is very elaborate where you know of good rivets that have stones set in them and there's number of washers so there's enough of movement or say for example this one that's really simple one that's just really based on the fact that you know there is a prong that's going through the component and you've got two washers on the side that um create the space for the component component to sit nice and flat and spin and then there is another one so this one is for um that's got rivets insta rivets and tube washers inside and um, you know that's for um, dome components so you can get an idea of um, how to use the kinetic components okay, I just have to let this go. <laughs> for various shapes so it does not have to be just flat ultimately you know when you're starting I would suggest start do a, do a trial with um, a, a flat piece and then from there start forming and shaping just so you get your head around how it needs to all come together. All right, and there's another sort of a kinetic um, um, joining method that I would like to show you, which is this really simple um, hinge. So, you know, the hinges you can use in whatever way you desire. These are probably best for flat pieces that connect flat rather than for lockets because they're not, that hinge, uh, hinge is not designed to be hidden that's a whole different area there of the hinges where you're making lockets and want your hinges to be hidden so basically what i'll show you is i've got a couple of samples in pieces so i'll i'll show you how to construct a spinning um, component on top of a ring and then i'll show you how to use um, granulated wires to connect components together so they can be kinetic and spin as well yeah. and um, then using these little bits that I've prepared I'll show you how you can use washers and make layered sort of objects that then will spin like the or make these components spin within um, each other and you know it, it might sound complex and I mean ultimately you can push it up to really complex levels you can actually bring various of these uh, or number of these uh, methods together in one piece this this comes really just down to one's imagination Andrew where's the torch <laughs> Andrew where's the torch <laughs> This is actually a chenille cutter. So what you use this for is, this is when you need to cut washers that are all the same size or spaces. So you can use a chenille cutter and set the size 
like a consistent length of the G3 cut. Is everyone familiar with Shania Karas? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? No? <coughs> well, basically, it's very handy tool. You can use it for chenilles and you can use it for wires as well. Um, some people who do a lot of rivets, longer rivets, use this for... Have you got a lighter? Yeah, One thing, hello! <laughs> One thing that we, we forgot about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, pe people who make a lot of longer rivets, say, if you, say for example, for... Are they still traveling? And there was that domed one, if you remember the domed one, yeah, it's got quite a long rivet inside. So, say if I need to, geez, we don't have a normal one, I don't know if I can operate this. <laughs> All right, that'll work. If you've got, um, oh, please, um, if you've got the longer rivets and you're making number of those pieces, you can just set the chenille cutter into a certain length. See, this allows you, so basically, here is where the saw blade goes to. And then, you know, if you say, need 5 mil, then you can use a ruler, measure from that slot to this little edge. So that's going to be setting it. And then you simply set it here. Some of these have a ruler on um, that little bar here as well, so you can use that one. And you set it here and then that way you can just cut, I don't know, 10, 20 of the same length of wire or chenille without having to measure and mark and, you know, and it also, what it does is it just really holds well the chenille cutter. So I can show you, for example, on this tube here. So you basically can have it sitting on the bench peg. It's really easy to use. I love chenille cutters. And then you set your length. So I'm gonna set it just on right about there. <laughs> it might be four millimeters. And um, I might just make me a couple of spaces for these lovely earrings here. Using this tubing. So you set it in there and then basically so you can let let it sit in the groove and then if you right handed like I am, you use your left hand to rub the fingers around the handle nice and firm and your thumb sits on the lever and then that, that holds the chip in really nice and firm. So, um, have any of you attempted to make any kinetic components before? Yeah? What did you guys make? I used the bits to join, um, to put little cogs, copper cogs, onto a, onto a disc and yep. separated it just with in the hardware spaces, but I'd like to be able to make my own space. Yeah, with the, yeah the, the chenille is the best for it, yeah. Mm. Okay, so then you can... She's been in there. Um, it's good to have a lemon because I'm pretty sure once I cut this, it might just go wandering on and fall. So if you're doing a lot of washes, <laughs> have a lemon. Something I didn't think of yesterday. You can use my apron. Squeeze <laughs> underneath there. Because yeah, as you pull the blade out, um, it is very easy to pull the washer out as well. Um, no, they have a four mil long. Four mil. Yeah, I mean the the length is really up to you, but see, I wanted decent amount of space between these components. I didn't really want them to be that close. 
So if I've got only two meal, I might not ha have enough not space. Enough mm -hmm. Yeah. So the idea was having them a little bit more spaced out. Mm -hmm. And the chenille is what? The chenille is big. <laughs> um, I mean, um, with with this design here, it is not important for me to have a chenille that fits exactly because. Um, because if it was too tight, you got no movement. That's one thing, and second thing is this is just design wise because I can here I can use quite a wide chenille because I've got quite a wide space. See, I've got quite a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be more um, inclined to go with um, chenille that fits really tightly when it comes to those components that were put together in the domed UFO looking object. There, you know, I'd be making sure that. Um, I've got a chenille that's got an inside element of the wire that I want to use for the rivet mm -hmm. or the tube. I'd be measuring. I'm sure I did here as well. This one. So the UFO actually had tube rivets. So that's one chenille that goes inside another. Yeah. <laughs> Outside diameter of that chenille needs to equal inside diameter of the mm. bigger chenille. Mm. So, you know, this again, this, this will come down to your design and what you particularly want to create because, you know, obviously there's a range of chenilles and you may want to have different looks. So, basically, if you just remember that if you're doing a tube rivet, the in outside diameter of the inner tube needs to equal the inside okay. diameter yeah okay. and then when you're drilling uh, you'd be drilling to the si uh, size of the outside okay. diameter of the smaller um, tube Tidy these a little bit. Have some sandpaper. My goodness. <laughs> Big stick. I just did mine. I'm just using half arm pliers. To hold the rivet. Or hold the bushes. Pardon? Just moving the edges where you Yeah, pretty much. Just making it just making it a little, little bit tidier. <laughs> <laughs> Just 800 sandpaper, just fine. We don't have to, you know, be too um, obsessive about this because the edges are actually going to be hidden. So, you know, as long as they're smooth, and there's no sharpness, you can roll with that. And then. Lovely little hand piece here, ready. So these I sent punched prior to the shaping. So remember that before drilling, always send the punch the locations where you want to drill. And now the drill bit is a little bit bigger than the wire that I'm going to be using, but that's okay. That means that that's going to give me a little bit more movement. So you can, if you want a bit of movement, if you're not doing rivets to hold pieces together, your say if I am going to, I want these two to be moving quite freely. I'll be using a washer and tube 
in between but the hole in this component because the washers will be holding the rivet that holds these these together the hole in these will be a little bit larger so say if i'm using wire to rivet so it's going to be a cheap holds these together and rivet that goes or washers made out of this cheap rivet that goes inside that wire that goes through the rivet is 0.8 the holes in this can be 0.9 or 1 mil to give you a nice movement because it's the tube that's going to be holding the wire the washers um, will be holding the ends of the rivet make sense cool. well I will show you a little bit more when I'm done with these little earrings I reckon I need a bench that is like twice as big than this. <laughs> bench that's bigger. Bigger bench, Andy. It's all about size with me. <laughs> so because it's round, I've got it, I've got it propped up with a dowel. Can see a bar spot. Now, those who know you, you know me and my work, know that um, bar brush is my favorite way of polishing. So, I often just stay at that level. I make sure there's no no deep scratches, but yeah, I love the brass brush finish. This just gives you really beautiful sort of a sheen on the surface of the model. Now I'm gonna reticulate, granulate onto the wire to two point nine. Perfect. So drill bit was one mil. This is point nine wire. Do it again, Gerald. I'm a little confident with this guy, so forgive me if, if it's gonna take me a while. And just can you help me with this? I mean, I like I don't work with these. Yeah. It's closed. Yeah, it's closed. So I just operate with normal eyelash. There you go. And he spends Fridays <laughs> playing with torches here. <laughs> okay, there we go. So for the granulation, you're probably all familiar with that. Get a nice pointy flame. Uh, 
can just pretty much roll it into titanium squeeze the heat up the whole length and just go a bit of the table to wire you get a really nice panel I've never seen it done that way. Why don't you just heat the end? Why don't you do the whole lot? Oh, because if you just heat the end and you've got this length of wire, a lot of your heat is going to be, because it's quite long, so a lot of your heat is going to be running up and it's not going to reticulate in this nice way. It's going to kind of get red and then it's going to like sort of like scrunch a little. Which is not going to give you this. Yeah. And you don't get a nice smooth ball. You get yeah. a different ball. Yeah. It's fine if you want a different ball, but this is still on. Let's still put that around. Has it? Yeah. Yeah. It's still to one side. A bit. Well, the one, the 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 direction of the cranial that is very much dependent on where the flame is sitting. So you know, if you really want a really really well centered cranial you need to have the flame like right underneath of the end. I mean... Um, Why don't you use Argentium then? And that would give you a little you know, too I, soft? Because I, I can't get Argentium in Australia and yeah. I'm, I prefer to go local. You can get it in Australia. A&E. They're, they're the ages, A&E. Right, okay, okay. Mm. But, but I don't know. too soft? Would it still work with that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not sure yeah. because I don't work with Argentium. So, I, 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 you I know, get, I, I, can, I can't really give you I, answers I get a pair of pliers that. and I just straighten it up on there. Yeah, the that's divots there, the divots it's there. It weakens it. I only use Argentium. Oh, mm -hmm. I, don't use, I don't use sterling for that sort yeah. of thing at all. And using you a jetting, get you get a perfect, perfect yeah, you get a perfect ball. Mm. Um, and yeah, no dimples. Yeah. Mm. Some yeah, people well, say to put flux on it too, which helps a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's the flux. It, it, no, it, it does it, yeah, it made no difference. Sometimes you might get a good one out of it. Yeah. You've got to have it perfectly straight. Um, if you, yeah, yeah, and come from underneath, and you've got to watch where it is in your flame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm actually not gonna pickle. I'm just gonna <laughs> let it roll. Brass brush. Yeah, brass brush. Oh, well, I mean, the, bra the brass brush will, is not is not gonna. Um, help with the um, oxidization but I just want you to have an idea of how it comes together because we all know how to pickle right mm -hmm. so then I'll pop that there get my washer number one on and this is just like a threading and I mean I, I use silver chenille here for edit color you can really easily use beads as well and just because it's beads it does mean that it's not a kinetic component it's still a kinetic component and then you've got to layer a little bit of color there too <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, it just needs to be spaced so you get a nice movement. there on you can just pretty much you know see I would like to have some beads on the top here or I think even a segment of tubing would be nice before I do the hook but yeah this this gives you a really good idea of how you can create a um, nice sort of a 3d component just send it around would you get more movement if you put one under that last one I don't First think one? so. No? no. That just would be a yeah, yeah, it's it yeah, it would not add more move. Yeah, it would yeah, I d I don't think it's yeah. Um you could probably get I mean, I'm quite happy with this amount of movement. You could maybe try if you can get more um with um a bigger hole. 
However, you know, for the purpose of the earring, I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm not sure why I would need more movement. Why would you need more movement? Eh? <laughs> everyone, needs, everyone needs more movement. <laughs> everyone needs more movement. Cool. All right, so now I'll just show you another way um, of using the granulated um, wires to create more space um, to join components that... Um, color and movement. Color and movement, yeah. I definitely need more color. So I sometimes get so bored with silver. <laughs> you don't realize that until you start getting... You're in yeah. You miss out on all the colour. All the colour, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Texture, exactly. Yeah. Well, I was about to say actually the um the enamel is an easy way to add colour. It is. It is a really easy way of adding colour. Oh really? It says hard like an enamel without having to fire it. Just on silver. Oh what is that? What's the integrity mm -hmm. like though? It's just like an animal, you, you can, um, can I get it going? Sure. 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 I'm gonna, and I'm gonna like, gas us all yeah, before yeah, I turn this on. And you sell that here, Andrew? Yeah. 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 Okay, oh, yeah. there we go. Now, now. <laughs> and you, um, so always after soldering, you can't do any work after that. Yeah. Is that a resin? Is that a resin-based board? Uh, it's a UV pure paint resin. Yeah, it would be like a resin. It's very expensive, okay. isn't it? Oh, really? <laughs> you don't use much, I imagine. It's not that expensive. I think it's hundred and ten dollars. You get five or six colours. You can mix them up. Yeah. Okay. So they can mix. You can mix them up, yeah. It's one called the All right, there's another way. And I mean, this is like you've got quite a distance here. But um, you can use a similar method to join dome components like this on a quite short scale, right? So that's another way you can use just a simple granulation. So I think with the... Um, Kinetic components, they really lend themselves for... Um, Which way is it going? This way? Whichever. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's just a component, it's not a finished piece, it's just to give you an idea that you can have, you can granulate wire on both sides whilst you've got components threaded on it and add movement to your pieces that way. So I could literally actually do this. Look. Exactly. <laughs> and then there you've got something that you know you can you can hang it. So these these the kinetic components they just really lend themselves for alternative ways of working, you know, and they what's that style? Not cyberpunk, oh, but steampunk. steampunk. That yeah, they 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 really good for that steampunk sort of a um, look. If um, you like that, or very you know. It's quite contemporary in design. Exactly, the contemporary. That's the way I was looking for. You had the question. Well, so I would do this. Do it the same way. The tip of the wire as close to the. I would. Well, how about we do it? <laughs> I mean, there, there, there is always a little bit of space. Now, if you want it closed, 
say you've got the dome right and you're gonna be joining them to have a movement you need like say looks like eight millimeters between the two holes that I've got on the pieces now you need to allow five millimeters for each of the granules that, that the granule takes up about five mil of your wire so if you want it really really close you start with wire that is approximately um, eight and 80 mil two centimeters long yeah so let me start there <laughs> okay. And then you can just create one granule at first. Which is a struggle, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I, More gas. Sure. <laughs> That's a good idea, that now. Don't put it towards it. Oh, right. And you're letting it all go. Turn it around. Is that still 0.91? That is still 0.91, yeah. Okay. So just grab that here. <laughs> Get your little granule done. I might just leave this on <laughs> for the second one. Okay. And you can thread it on, put your components on. One, two, yeah. And you can hold it with the tweezers again, really nice and close. And you can just heat it up. Heat up the wire. And hold it down. There we go. <laughs> and then you can. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Just watching what you were doing. Then you can curve it up a little bit. Or bend these up. <coughs> See, and you've got them sitting really quite nice and close. Yeah, with this with this method, there is always a little bit of space. It's a different, yeah. It's, it's a, you know, it's a different method. It's, it's a different, different look. It looks really good um, on the dome com components. You can use it on flat as well. It just gives a different sort of a movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it will probably not curve as, as nicely, but say for necklaces, you can really um, easily mm -hmm. use it because there it's it's nice and flat. Now you were saying you had a pal that he wanted to yeah. touch yeah. in a kinetic way. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Some sound as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to attach that in a kinetic way. Mm. 
rice. And you know what are you going to add that to? Some space, twisted space bar. So it's like a flamingo's foot. I was going to say it looks like a foot. It yeah. does, doesn't it? It's yeah. A, it's going to be a flamingo's foot and the space bar will be its legs. Oh. But I don't know how to fly. I mean, just have it thought about how to see that the foot. So you're going to drill it? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah right. Okay. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that, that's we're gonna take some sketches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my mind. Yeah, I'm gonna get some ideas while I'm here. Yeah, you may wanna um, yeah, Think do about it. yeah, do some sketches because this this is gonna be it's gonna be probably one of the pieces where you need to bring together a couple of the methods. Yeah. To to get it moving. Yeah, and also probably don't want to really scratch it or anything. So not that you see that. Yeah, you don't want to scratch it. No, no. So you probably won't see it. It's, it's not going to be that heavily smoothing. Okay, I'll just get all of this that I don't need now out of my way. <laughs> and so what I am going to do now is I'm going to show you how to um, put that spinning component on top of a ring. If you're working on a flat surface, that would be exactly the same. It's actually a little bit um, easier. So you can, you know, easily put um, spinning components on flat, but it's a bit more um, fun to put it on a ring. Okay, so I'm gonna get a thing and center punch. Because what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to solder a post onto the ring. And I mean you can solder it or you can rivet it. I find that you know <laughs> soldering just gives you a little bit more um, sturdiness. Just need to grab point nine go bit. I'm in a surgery. I'm so quiet. Dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Such a nice quiet drilling tool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And then poke the right wire I'll put here. Your post too. Now with the post, you can cut it a little bit longer just for the purpose of the soldering. And then trim it to length.
Yeah, how <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, I don't like using a lot of flux. I, I use the bare minimum I have to because um, I just have really bad memories of a lot of flux always always taking my solder away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is like, like yeah, yeah, some point. But let me just set it up here. So this brick is perfect for your job, all right? Because you can just poke the pose right into the brick and then just solve it from inside. If you don't have a brick like that, the honeycomb brick at home, you can just easily use your tail hand and prop it up using the third hand. Because the wire will hold your ring. Okay. If you prop it up in there like this. Did you bead that wire? Or you just put it on an angle? Beaded wire. What's underneath? Nothing. It, no. You just got it on an angle? Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. You need to straighten it up. Not really, not really. Yeah, because you know, you can straighten it after it's soldered. Yeah, so you don't have to actually spend time doing the perfect thing on the brake if you can straighten it afterwards. It's like with um, earring posts. They don't have to be perfectly straight when you're soldering them on because you have the ability to use pliers and I mean I'm, I'm not saying like 45 degrees yeah, okay. let's just make that clear but see if you put a very slight still like this you don't have to spend the time to make it perfectly straight you can just solder it and gently tweak it with half round pliers um, after it's soldered saves you time and frustration I've learned <laughs> all right and now I'm gonna use medium solder for this I could use easy but you know it's gonna be a joint that's gonna be doing a fair bit of work so I'm gonna use medium solder <laughs> things in Yes, Gerald, it happened again. <laughs> it's only happening because you're here. Quite a good size solder. Did you put it on top? Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, it's just because I didn't want to unset it again. But yeah, if you've got the. Pardon? Not going to be soon. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> I don't know if you ladies apply this method to sewing as well I do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever's on inside you know no, no one's gonna see what's not gonna be seen doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> okay you've got it Ring. So you just ma mainly want to focus here on the ring because the wire is going to be picking up heat from just that and just gently hit it, get all your flux clear. And then lay it underneath, see it turn it so it's 
go through the whole um, thing. And a couple of pieces. I'm just gonna leave those in the water. In the water, yes. <laughs> How do I work without you guys? <laughs> Let it sit in. Yeah. You on the uh, iceberg? Yeah. The no, I don't. You don't want the basket? No. Going like this. Whilst I'm waiting for that, let me just tidy this space here. Very carefully, put a, a tiny little washer. So I might just leave it here so I don't lose it. And then I'm gonna put a, another washer to be used on top of the green where I'm gonna with it. So for that, I'm gonna use the chenille cutter again. And I'm gonna use this tiny little. I'm using one. Are you gonna put one or two washers? One washer? One below? One below. Yeah, one below, um, and that that one is not so much a washer, but um, because I've done quite a few of those rings, I've noticed that because they are curved, if there's no flatness underneath, they tend to like wiggle. Yep. So I've got like this mini skewer <laughs> thingy to go on the bottom to create a little bit. So you can wash feel, free, yeah, feel free to grab it, guys. <laughs> Just no, don't dip it. I'll drop it. I don't want to be responsible <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's so, it about two mil or something like that? Um, about maybe three. Yeah, I just basically punched yeah, the disc yeah. using a disc cutter and then oh, yeah. drilled the hole. You can go the other way as well. So you're putting a washer, then a bit of tube on top. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, you can How much always... for those, Andrew? Well, the little 30, the impulse 30, that's around three and a half thousand dollars. Is that all? Yeah, we'll have a couple. Mm -hmm. well, here's and hers. Five minutes it took to um, get the soldering job ready, you would have done five of them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, totally. How many would have I I've sold in that time? Yeah. Well, depends, on, depends on your marketing strategy. <laughs> but no, it's true, like for little um, tiny components, like for example, the post, the welders, um, the laser laser welders or the Orion welders are really, <coughs> they're not actually laser, they're electric, but um, they're really good because they don't heat up, you can hold it there, there's no flux, no fumes, no fickle required, and you just do tuck, tuck, so done. Can work beside stones? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, exactly, yeah, so a lot of people who do repairs, a lot of repairs yeah. actually buy them because it cuts their time down, you know, and then no. they don't have to say, because a lot of people, a lot of jewelers would say no to repairs. Um, because they would have to unset all of the stones and then um, set them and then you know the quotes that were coming out of that that because of the time that it goes into it um, would be really high so a lot of jewels would be like oh look actually I don't want to do it and nowadays they can just you know tuck it together and it's it's all all ready to go less chemicals that's what I like about it mm -hmm. much less chemicals it's quite all right Favorite blood brush. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to support that um, dome. That's one thing that um, I found challenging as well was because. Um, it's hard to get the hole in the dome right in the center because if the hole is not right in the center, it will also flop to the side. 
so that's why um, there was another hole there. <laughs> that's why I've got those lovely. That's why I've got those lovely silver components there. <laughs> so <laughs> we were wondering about the silver components. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that's an added feature. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, look, it's just about the way I operate. Um, as in, you know, if I make a mistake, I still try to make something of it. You know, it's not. It, yeah, it's not. It's not. <laughs> It's not the end of the road, you know, and some, sometimes it actually leads to much in, more innovative yeah. solutions than I would otherwise um, choose mm -hmm. to work with. Mm -hmm. And luckily, most of the time, it works. So, with your pose that you've got on inside, the excess you can just cut off and file off. I don't even know if there is a half on file somewhere here. That would be right. Beautiful Swiss file. Now you can blend them in if you'd like to, so they disappear, but I, I, I just tend to stop at the point when they are not uncomfortable, because I don't mind that little detail on the inside of the ring there. What are most of your kinetic components on? Like, do you mostly do kinetic rings or kinetic earrings or kinetic... <coughs> I do tendons? anything. Anything. And then... Can I normally this? Not really. That's. I mean, you know, say like with the hinges, there is two main uses, and that's your hinges on bracelets, and then um, hinges on, on um, lockets. That, 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 those are those two main uses for hinges. But when it comes to these kinetic components, you can literally go like wild because there's there's no limits to that. Yeah, that's why. Um, these methods that we are looking at today are more suitable for what you mentioned, uh, which is the contemporary practices rather than tra the traditional practices. So that's why I would not have a lot of kinetic components in my um, production lines, because unfortunately they are not commercially viable. Because the, you know they're not commercially viable because they um, there is a lot of effort that, as you can see, there's a lot of effort that goes into kin kinetic components and then yeah you have to have a very smart marketing strategy behind it to be able to sell it to pay for your time but at the same time you know if you are about unique say with the kinetic components what was a good thing was that um, there's a lot of effort that clearly went into it but there was a lot of components and ideas that they ca that were coming out of that that I then was able to successfully incorporate into my production series so the piece that was made with the connect kinetic components was perfect for promoting those series because it, it was just visually so rich. But then, you know, the production series would be much more um, simpler in that way because, you know, you've got some um, costs that you need to keep in mind, cost, cost of your time, cost of your ma materials, yeah. And then, you know, I, I, I tend to operate like that a lot, that, you know, I do regularly exhibitions and quite really heavy GT conceptual pieces that then inform my production um, production line and <coughs> if, if I run workshops then they inform workshops as well so it's yeah for me that's, that's a very very healthy and balanced way to operate okay, okay so this is tidy well I'm feeling proud so the work Melt it in, nice and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it, you know, sometimes it, it can get just so messy that you spend another half an hour trying to get rid of it. And especially, you know, if it happens in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> so. You look like a professional. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Anne. <laughs> I tend to pull off that look quite well. <laughs> okay, so just tiny little wash. Don't give away a second. No worries. Tiny little washer. Looks like that paddle works, Andrew. Which nickel? Uh, depending on there's several variants. Uh, my favourite actually has the 30, 30 and 35. And yeah, it's good more. Let me not lose this washer. The other thing a lot of people do is um, instead of using the red handle, they attach it to their vice. They take the handle off and put the block yep. straight into their vice and yep. it's held like a micro. Sticks for this guys. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's really tiny. Like it's just for the top. <laughs> Two reasons for that because um, it's gonna support the end of my rivet, and as well, it's gonna make the end a little bit higher because sometimes when you riveting at the bottom of the dome, it's really hard to get in there with a riveting hammer like I mean I help myself as well using little doming punches to get inside of the dome to sp spread the head of the rivet now washer number one okay, right here I'm just see how I'm gonna get it I never found it in the carpet <laughs> <laughs> then this goes on very good see of movement there. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to put this washer on. <laughs> no, I mean you can have them the same size but there's no need for them to be the same size. Yeah. I mean, on the bottom, there is a reason why I made this one bigger though, because I wanted, I didn't just want the space, I also wanted a little bit of flatness, so um, the dome is not sitting on top another, of another dome, because then, yeah, because it's, it's hard to sit it flat then, yeah. This is going to be operation. Operation washer. Tidy. So I did, prior to this, I filed the one end of, of the chip. So if you're doing this work, make sure that you're threading on, and it's gone. <laughs> threading on the side that you filed. No. Well, it's easy. When it comes to components like that, if they're not made out of gold, it's actually easier to, uh, let <laughs> yeah, let it go. It's gonna take you less time. Oh, hey, it's my lucky day, guys. Look, I just found it in my apron. <laughs> okay, so just sometimes it is a little bit of a hassle to is thread it the on the, the, the tube that goes on the top. Yeah, so I'm just gonna file this a little bit thinner on top <coughs> so I can get the washer on much easier. I mean, it's a washer as well, as in sense, because it's a... Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's test this. Push that one down now to the marker and mark just on top of the tube just so I can cut this the right length. Thank 
Which one's got what day? Where is it? Okay, so I want to send this around, guys. Or if you can, <laughs> maybe come, come and have a look just so you get an idea of how much of the wire you need to have about the, about the washer to create a successful rivet. So you just, because if you've got excess of wire, as you start hammering, see, so there's just a smidge, it's probably like only 0.7 of a millimeter. Oops, it's okay. It's mine. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. Yeah, so you just want like 0.7, not even a full millimeter. If you do have an excess wire, then what the rivet is gonna do as you start hammering it, it's gonna start um, bending. So you need to really make sure, see, so this is like a little tiny bit that. And this is this is what's gonna be important as well when you're hammering. Okay. My nails, Robin, my nails. How do you do that? It's shellac. <laughs> <laughs> but by now they're going. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't polish off in the first two days. <laughs> the equipment. <laughs> I have, haven't even thought, yeah. thought of that, but yeah, thank you. And then this can really sit here. So it's because it's round, it's best to have it sitting on a ring mantle. I'm gonna Put this ring mantle in here. This doesn't have a hole in the front, does it, to put the mandrel in? Pardon? No, it doesn't. Oh, it's got a hole in it. Well, mine doesn't. Maybe it still works better. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, you can put, you put, put yourself a... Uh, no. <laughs> Ah, oh, they haven't drilled it through. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we tried it. We tried it. Okay. Maybe this is something that we need to talk to the manufacturers about. Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> this only looks good. <coughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> to make sure this is somewhat stable, and that is somewhat stable. I can thread that thing on. You're just going to hammer it now? Are you not going to use a beading tool? Or? No, I'm not going to use a beading tool. Even though that is actually a good idea. Yeah. I'm just going to shift on there. And I'm just going to use the doming punch to spread the rivet on top. Big chip, perfect. Okay, not that way. So you know, you've got a really nice movement there. Now, if you do make pieces like this, like you can tell that I'm <laughs> a bit rustic, <laughs> but if you want a really good finish, obviously your pieces need to be polished prior to this because um, you can actually polish the rivet off. So if you're doing polishing with the post on, just make sure you cut it a little bit longer because you can still polish a little bit of the length off. 
if you if you've got it cut into size. Let's see now we're spinning. Good. <laughs> I'm happy. Pass the road test. Yeah. Pardon? It passed the road test. It passed the road test, yes. So you can get yeah, and I think um it's the bottom um washer that is giving it really lovely movement. There you go. Have a look. Today. Is Andrew your mm. No. But he, oh, he, he likes taking, taking good care of right? <laughs> He keeps us happy. Better than a stress ball, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, that's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they went out, didn't they? Don't see them anywhere. Hey, you can get really tiny ball bearings, you know. But <laughs> well, you know, they're silver, they're, they're down in a rough so it's stainless. Mm. Okay. Now we can do. The tube one. So I'm going to be using a tube inside of a tube. Okay, I'm going to cut a couple of these washers. I mean, I'll, I call them washers, but you could equally um, call them spaces. Because, you know, we can create spaces between objects as well. Like using to cut those, um, spaces. I mean, I'm not actually entirely sure what this one is. I just went, looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, this looks finer. So, mm -hmm. somewhat finer. I say, you know, zero, one slave, zero, probably two cores. So, this this will also depend on um, what tube, you know, say if it's like, I'm cutting a tube like this, one is probably going to be good because the walls on that one are quite thick. Yeah, but this one is a bit finer. Just you know, this is just from experience. I reckon this is three slave zero. Yeah, so that that's the one that I would be using for um, finer tubes like this. Three slave zero. You can go for four slave zero as well. You know, that's it's just something finer mm -hmm. that you want um, for something like this. I think you know by now I just I just got accustomed to just sort of guessing because you know I've been just like yeah look at that oh yeah that'll do because <laughs> I mean the, the thing is you can always adjust you know you give it a go with this one and then it, you know you find it that's a bit frustrating and it's a bit catchy you go okay actually that will not do let's get something finer Yeah, I'm probably the least by the book person. Lamo, <laughs> 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 
be so handy. So in this instance, I'm making three little bushes. With the kinetic components. And some really small hinges, tiny latches. I think that ring that was um, the promo ring for mm. here, the latch on that one was probably the smallest. The hinges were quite all right because the ring itself, it, it was actually quite large. I mean, I was trying to talk the girl out of it, but she just wouldn't give up. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it ended up, it, it was for a man, so I suppose, you know, it can be quite large, but you know, it ended up sitting because we had to build in the lights inside, so there had to be space for the LED lights inside. So it was sitting about that high mm -hmm. above it. Above that was above the ring in the photo that went out. Yeah. Above his finger, yeah. yeah. But it had green light, it had a light inside and lit up. Yeah, yeah. So this, that was probably one of the most um, unusual commissions that I had. She was all unusual. She also asked me, well, she also asked me to set her... She designed it or you designed it? No, I designed it. She said, I want this. I've got this, this idea. Can you, you know, what can you, how can you realize it? But she also gave me um, three of her brother's teeth. Mm. <laughs> teeth. <laughs> to set into rings, yeah. Teeth. Teeth. Yeah. Because she loved her bird. She was a very lo loving person, an extremely <laughs> loving person, but just... The way she showed love was very unusual because she then, yeah, she wore those rings because she loved her brother so much. He was a little kid. Um, yeah. Was her name Angelina? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to give away the name because, you know, she, she might have an unusual taste, but she's actually a very cool chick. Okay, so. So you had to sit at, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I didn't have a very close look, but you had to sit on electronic yeah. elements in there? Into the into ring. ring. Yeah, there's a switch and two LED lights inside. Yeah, because the, um, the gentleman's passion was the Green Lantern movie. movie. Oh. So we it's had. Yes, yeah, so we had to have the green LEDs inside, then we had green emeralds on top, 
and then his initials cut out on outside that's where the light was coming and the two hinges that you know would allow us to change the batteries as well <laughs> It was, I mean, it was, good, it was an interesting job, including the setting of the square emeralds and everything, you know, making the pattern. He actually made me a little mark there to make sure I don't make this hole too close to the edge so it doesn't wear through. Okay, so this is about what I want it to be. Do I have calipers somewhere here? Yes. So this is, guys, something that you will need to. If you, I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of showing you the ways components can be joined. But if you're doing these as final pieces, I suggest you actually have this on paper and carefully establish say especially with this tube um and washer in between um setting or joint how far from the edge does your actual opening for the tube need to be because you don't want it to be too close your minimum is two mil away from the edge and that is the edge of the tube not the center because as it moves it will tend to wear through so if you've got it sitting like a mill away from the edge over the time it will wear through and you know then it's just like no way of going back and fixing it up when it wears through so two millimeters away so if I measure this I've got this so I took took in um, as well the diameter of the washer so it none of it it's too close. Okay, so altogether I'm gonna be center punching at three millimeters on away from the edge on both of the pieces. get lost in my own mess here. So I'll just start with the small little bits for a pilot hole and then work the hole up to the diameter of the hole that I've got here.
Okay, there. In perfectly. So the chip that I'm going to be using um, to join the pieces together with is 1.5 on outside. So that's what the size of my of the holes needs to be. Do you normally put a lubricant on a pit? Yeah. I mean, you consider it necessary? I consider it really necessary if I'm doing a lot of drilling. I consider it absolutely necessary if I'm using bears or setting bears. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, with the drilling, yeah, th I mean, th this is quite thin. So, yeah, I'm not too worried. But if, you know, if you're going, <coughs> say, like, you know, 1.2. 1.5 mil thickness of metal then the lubricant will help you yeah yeah It is in reverse. <laughs> no, is it? I mean, I'm not actually familiar with this machine all that much. It's low and I mean, L and R. L and R. I don't know if R is a reverse. I mean, uh, on, right. on left and right. And left. left and right. Spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was right. Right, yeah. So it was in reverse. It was just. It was just right, actually. <laughs> But you know, sometimes even the drill bit goes. So yeah, this one might just not be as sharp anymore. Let's see if left was better on this one. Nothing left. Nothing Nothing happening there. Maybe one point five as well. Let's see. We just sort of grab what we had available on the bench and stuff. <laughs> May has been used, you know, before way too many times. <coughs> oh, see, much better. Yeah, it's all. So this one is out of action. So what I'm going to do now is put the components on just so I can get an idea of how long I need to. Okay. So for the tube of it, it's very similar to, to get a good rivet head on the tube, just about that much, see, above the washer on each side. And the vent is to create a little bit of space. Okay. You don't have to have that washer in between. You can get a little bit. I could just do the tube of it, get those two moving. Um, if I ever did it with a cardboard in between to, to get that little bit of space.
So on both sides I will need a guard. So you don't need a lot, for the chicken but you don't need a lot at all because they, they kind of open up over the, over the top. Oh, no, in on top, yes. Yes, yes. She put it on the table. She put it on the table. And then got a little dining room. And tapped it with that. No jacket. So that's about as much, you know, you need to do with it, not a lot. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. I mean, and uh, again, it depends on, you know, this is, this is all down to design because you, yeah. can, you can play with the spaces. I mean, if I, you know, since I'm holding it like this, this could be actually a component for a kinetic earring where you could have another disc here and if you put the wire going through this way so it's moving all, you know, like um, behind each other. Shout out to this is just show it up to the end of the I can show it up to the camera. It's just just a little bit of a detail. This is how much of she do you need to have a sheep between she rivet? And yeah, you can have a component that just put a wire that goes through and hang. Oh that one? Oh I'll show you later. Okay. She's got three bits of three spaces here. Put on the line up and pen and marker. Yeah, that's what she's holding quick. Mark behind the third washer. And now, this is how I think I'm, I'm not really the best when it comes to measurements, where, wherever I can sort of I go by reference points at, a lot. So, even if I say have multiple holes that I need in the same distance, I don't go measure, I just take a piece of paper, I measure once, put two marks, and then just use the two marks and continuously mark using those. Yes. Just because rulers do my, my eyes in. Um, so for me, the indicator here is, I'm familiar with the thickness of the marker that I use, so to get the right length of the tube behind my last washer, I'm going to cut behind that line. Not on the line, but behind that line. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give me enough of length for the tube. Okay. Take all of this off. If you annealed that tube before you riveted it, would it make it easier because the material is softer? Mm. Like when you did the ring, yeah, that would have been annealed because you put it on. Well, it was softened, but yeah, I mean, see, when it comes to the rivets, you usually work with such a small amount of metal yeah. that the resistance that the metal will give you is yeah. so minimal yeah. that, you know, the annealing in it is not necessary. Say, if I, maybe, if I was working with doing a rivet out of this end thicker, mm. then the annealing could possibly, mm. uh, you know, make a difference to how it all spreads. Mm. Yeah. But then also, you know, for, for your practice at home, give it a go. Like I'm a, I'm a bit heavy handed, so mm. <laughs> put the metal into submission. <laughs> <laughs> why, why wouldn't you finish that end before you cut it? Why wouldn't you just put it on now and go and hang on? Why don't you rivet the end? What you're saying is, why don't you rivet that first well, and then cut it off the other end? Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're yeah. going to work with a little. Yeah. Too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I. You mean why don't I spread the end for myself now where I've yeah. the Yeah, I mean you can but at the same time this is a tube. i to spread it, I would have to somehow put it in here, right? Mm. And how am I gonna prevent the squashing of the tube? With wire that would make perfect sense because yeah. the wire is not hollow. Yeah. But with the tube mm. I'm like I 
you know, th th this yeah. could lead to a damage of the chip, which, you know, with wire you can still, you know, if you squash it a little bit, file it, sand it, you know, still make it look pretty, but with the chip, the, it's going to be really hard to actually make it cheap again. Mm -hmm. So that, that's probably why, yeah. Gone so quiet again. That blade. Do I have another blade here? There's a little bit of a notch on it, and that's why it gets stuck. Like a beading tool. Yeah, that's got the cup inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know because you know it's hard. Gerard, make. No, no, no. I am just trying to get I'm her head around the. Finishing the end of that yeah. wire. You suggested a. Um, beading tool. Beading yeah. Oh, beading tool. So you can keep the different slip off. It's got an inverted hole. Correct. Yeah, so you but can use them for the setting too, so it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So wouldn't that cut away the silver sort of No, you only just Spread seeing it, it slowly oh, straight okay. down. Otherwise, it'll lean yeah, over. Okay. And you can get the tools vary in, in the yeah. inversion like size. A, yeah. Another thing is in, with the, uh, the tube rivet, if you get a, a, an old drill bit and you snap it, it, the point where it comes down, it's got a little, so when you put it in there, it flares gradually, you can just tap it a little bit, you know? No. The, the drill bit's just got a shank, yes. and it's ground down, yes. around in the, yes. the diameter, yes. if you snap it, you yes. use the little curve, the, the radius, yes. Just slowly to open your. Yeah, well, I mean, it does yeah. pretty much what the doming punch does. Yeah. But what Gerald is it, saying, more, you know, you can, more centralized. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, you, you can just no. utilize, utilize, you know, oh, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever yeah. you've got at like home. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But it's got that little nice radius in it. You know? so you can tap it to whatever size you need and you one and two. Yeah, I'm going to set it. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's always one, one more than one way to skin a cat, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you know, you can work out the way that work, works for you the best. Punches the shadow. 
just drop it. It is. Very much so. Put your metal detector here. Yep. So I'm going to put that here, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. Let's just deploy my tube wet. I had another little riveting hammer here. Like that. Okay. I'm gonna put it on there, just like that. Just deploy my tube. And I mean, I'm I'm pretty slow when it comes to the riveting, as in, it, despite the fact that I said I'm a heavy-handed when it comes to rivets, I go <laughs> that it's a three-tab method method so i just tap slightly with the rounded end at first not really see if they're more like stocky and then flip and tap the other side so it's just full of it did in it. Okay. And gradually, that way you can gradually flare the ends. This is why I said the drill bit would be handy. Yeah, you put one on top and yeah. it centralizes and then you yeah. just tap it and it's still on both sides. Totally. Can we break the oh, drill bit? <laughs> can we break can it? We break it? Henry, can we break it? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a bit too large. thick for this. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 1.5 and I would need a 0.8 one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's easy to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. You can even use that, you know, just grind it to a nice little thing. And then yeah. Once you locate the bottom, you don't have to clamp it. Yeah. Just put the top in there and if you can. Very tricky to Sorry, I didn't hear that. Repeat that. <laughs> Learning something new every day. Just don't shorten it. <laughs> Washers, really? Yeah. 
not in my apron. Punch it. Okay, I'll get rid of the bowl. Pop it on the center punch. Put that there. And then you're using the toss. Well, I just need to find that washer. The cow down there is ready. In just yes, under here. <laughs> Let's see if it can work the same punch. One. But that's okay. Look, it's a good trick. It's a good trick. Because I'm not sure if this. Because uh, <laughs> I'm not. We see. Well, I'm not sure if the center the point is. Yeah, and the, yeah. The, see, the center point is a bit thick as well, mm -hmm. so it, it's not fitting in. But you know, you know, it was well pointed out that you know, if you would be using where's that cheap jewel that we just looked at. A chip that's like this, that thickness, this would work just fine. The drill bit would work just fine. Because I'm using one that's much thinner, that's why the rounded surface works for me better. Much more painstaking, clearly, with my washers on as well. <laughs> I need to operate with that wash around here. Oh, we get the idea anyway. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't catch it this one time. No, that's something else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Look, if you do get the idea anyway, we might just leave it here. Yeah. Instead of looking for the washers. But, you know, this is... Um, How important the washer? Well, it's not really important. You know, it's not really important. It's just, it would be so hard for me now to shorten um, that tube to to sort of flare it without the washer. It's not, yeah, the washer is really not important. But it's just that, you know, it's just a design feature that you can, you can add there. Because you can flare the tube on top, but this is, this is the um, wire. So could you flare the tube without having the washers there? So that the pieces then will just move along the Yes, tube. yeah, yeah. That that well. Exactly, you can do that that way as well. You do need the washer in between. Yeah. On both sides of the tube. Um. Is it in between or is it just on No, no, I, I had it on both sides, just for design. Yeah. 
but see this is this is the other thing that I was talking about before where you can just have that see, this can be your kinetic component but that, for that reason those washers would be perfect because they'd be holding um, they'd be holding the circles in place so you know these don't have to be circles you can have multiple um, different shapes and you can be creating stories using those shapes what I was meant to show to the camera as well. <laughs> Alright. So I'll leave this one here and we'll just do the hinge. Now this is, um, as you notice, I do a lot of cheat things. So this also is a cheat hinge. Alright. And um, the cheat part about it is I don't actually use titanium wire, titanium rod to hold the pieces of the tube together. I pre-cut the big piece. The um, So but basically what I do, I cut a piece of tube that is this long. Yeah, that, that is the length of my imagined hinge. Then I mark that. Or, you know, you can, again, you can work with it. You know, you can have two longer sides, one thinner one, <laughs> two shorter sides, one longer one in the middle, up to you. And then I basically just solder that hole, cut, I cut a center of that long piece out, solder that to my part, then cut the whole um, wall out, fit in the third piece, and then whilst I've got the third piece in, I actually use those two that I already soldered on to hold the third one in place. So after explaining all of this, let me show you. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. And you it's just a, sandbag the middle piece then. It's a... So, so was that end? So when you're putting the third, the third piece, you just sand back a little bit. Yes, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's because this is one thing about me. As much as I love working at edges and love um, knowing about all these tools, I myself actually, I like to have the minimum tools I can. Not sure why that is, but I think it's got something to, with the way that you know I like the idea of portable studio and to for it to be, yeah, to, for for it to be portable. There is actually the portability is quite important for me as well, and for it to be portable, I need to be able to carry it by myself. So look at me, and how much I can carry. I only have a small <laughs> car, <laughs> so wherever I can cut corners on, not you know, not having tools, I just don't, I just don't go there. But I'll go here. <laughs> so I'm going to cut that whole segment of the tube. So um, create a hinge that is covering the whole length um, of my piece. Of the oh, side. I that idea. Of the yeah. cheat hinge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I fell in love the first time I saw it. <laughs> It was love at first time, and then you can cut it. I could use the shins, but, it's but for whatever reason, I'm just choosing the hardest ways today. <laughs> okay. get a tube with a one mil hole? Yes, you can. Why are you using 0.9 and not one mil? Because I had 0.9 in the studio. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I you mean, have. you can, you know, you can... I'm having a lot of trouble with the 0.9 and the, and the one. And yeah, right. No, look, this absolutely feel free to adjust this to what works for you. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just basically grab what I had available 
and you know um when with that i mean I, I made hinges with that too before so you know for me i was just like yeah let's do this but you know if if you're having troubles you know adjust your practice to what what's the most comfortable for you you know so because you're gonna have to if you you know if you commit to it you, you need to feel comfy that you know you need to you need you need to you need to love it to be able to go on with it if you're not not loving it you won't be able to you know progress with that so you, you adjust it to what you love yeah Project I was doing. I wanted one with one mill and there was none in stock, so I took 0.9 and went right. We'll just go there because it's easy to finish. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. I pretend to pretend to engage you, said it's a size 0.9. <laughs> 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 and one point two, and that's why I buy box, so I get the always buy the six pack, and so it's, I don't have to have all variety. Yeah. Well, it just depends on the cloud, depends on what yeah. I want it to look like, and. If I'd done this before with one mill and it worked well, so I'll, I'll do this and right. make sure you don't have it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's the... Different. That's what Renata was talking about, comfort. Yeah, visually, it's, but it's, mm. to me it wasn't comfort, it's yeah. got to be done. So yeah, some, that, and that, that's the reason as well, you know, sometimes mm. when I run workshops, you know, I might have in my notes use 1.8 wire, but, you know, the suppliers didn't have it, so we mm. had to use 1.6, yeah. Mind you, you know, you can always make your own tube. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> sure. Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once. And then, I, and then I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna find alternative methods. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I mean, if you're making a tube yeah. that is of like a decent diameter, it's okay. Yeah. But you know, something like this, you, you kind of have to start yeah. with really big and then go and go and go and go and go, and by that time, you know, online, I've got the order place and it's going my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I did here is I popped, I measured the overall length of my tube that was 21 millimeters. So I want quite a nice even hinge. So divided it into three, which is about seven millimeters. And what I'm gonna do now is so basically. See how good marked here. So now I'm gonna cut in between this these two marks. I'm gonna slice the tube halves. Just to mark it. Just to mark it exactly. So so the two pieces are actually still held at some point. And I think I I know what what is making this hard for me is um, the the bench, but yeah, it's very low. <laughs> well, this is my fault because you know I fitted it the day yesterday, <laughs> thinking oh yeah that'll do. You know how you sometimes go like, oh, yeah, that'll do. And then it's just like, yeah, I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> okay. Maybe. So you're going about halfway or are you just marking the outside? Um, actually, <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. And yeah, again, for doing this, if you're doing the finer tube, Get a final blade, okay? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I will answer your question once I'll finish this stuff. <laughs> around so you guys can see what happened so basically in the tube imagine this is the tube so in the tube I've cut a little a spliced in halves here so then I can position it against my metal sold it in place and then I've got a space here I'll thread the blade through and I'll just cut the edges of the two segments there So the, the bit that is sticking off, I'm going to take that 
um, away before, but I just wanted you to see what so what is it that came off. What's the inner diameter of the statue? 0.8 millimeters. And what wire are you using? 0.8. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for the hinges, you want to have it quite nice and tight. However, I have seen hinges that have um, granulated ends on them and are a little bit looser, so you can you can have a space. I mean, as I said, you know, there is so much in this. There's actually an American artist who utilizes this a lot. Mary Hitzman's book? No, but thanks. Is it Mary Hitzman's book? There's a lot of I don't know. I just remember that her, the book is called Cold Connections. Yeah, it's Mary. Yeah? She calls herself Mary Quite Hitz, a nice, it's a big, nice big, book. big yeah. book. And yeah, she does a lot of um, figures. Yeah, this one that I'm talking about. Yeah, she does a lot of figures and little dolls that are hang. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I did her workshop here. Yeah, yeah. What, was she here? Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah, I was very lucky. Yeah. yeah. Because you would very easily then cut into your piece. It's hard to stop at the end of the tube. So if you if you soldered the whole tube right, mm -hmm. then that means that the whole tube is soldered. So if you're trying to hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. firmly sorted to it so how are you gonna make these two corners where you're cutting really nice and sharp yeah, yeah see the bit that is that, that part is the hard hard part so that's why people would pre-cut the chips as well this this is another way um, you can go about it but they kind of limited by the amount or by the sizes of titanium wire available because titanium doesn't heat up that much and doesn't take solder all that well so you would take that titanium rod and you would thread all three of your pieces so two on one side and one, on and one in the middle yeah. and you would you would have your two pieces of metal that are to be hinged lined together and you can solder it in once so you're using the titanium rod to line it up mm -hmm. but this is without a titanium rod where I'm gonna have I'm gonna solder that piece then cut off from so the piece is going to be sitting here, the, the gap that I've got is going to be next to the edge of the metal. So I'm going to thread the saw blade through, cut out to, you know, like yeah. outwards. Yeah. So I don't have to worry that I'm going to cut into my piece of metal. And then I'm going to fit the third piece of tube in there. And so I'm going to solder medium, medium, and then the, the third one, easy. So the two prior ones don't get unsoldered. I mean, it all sounds really complex, but actually, in doing, it's so easy. Yes, it's so easy. Yes, yeah. yeah, sometimes I think, you know, the easiest things are the hardest to explain. I've got to do it. And of course, if you don't want to worry about medium and easy solving, you buy a welder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you just stuck it in place. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, you guys would actually be surprised if you have a time next year and you see the Orion um, demos coming up, come along. You've been at the Orion, isn't it amazing? Well, you need a couple of tests and you're only solving. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know, it's like you working with pen, you know, it's like a pen. There's no flags, no solder, none of that. Oh, this is too much flag, the solder's gonna bubble away. That's not there, no pickling, no chemicals, no fumes. Love it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> one day. Does it fit in your car? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it fits in my car. <laughs> you make it. You make it, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that, Robin, that would be perfect for portable studio. No gas bottles, no torches, no pickle. All I need is solar panel so I can power it. <laughs> What's that? What about for annealing? For annealing, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> you, you, you use casting services of Palois <laughs> to make your rings. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, for annealing it probably wouldn't work. Well, you get your little torches for annealing.
Okay, could you see how 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 much of a friend I'm of, of the torch? No. <laughs> like, how does this work? I mean, I actually have never used this one before. I, I use the Orca, um, but I use the you know the one that comes um, goes to the. <laughs> no, I use a lighter. I'm a smoker. And um, yeah, a gas bottle. Yeah. So you know, I learned something new today as well. So the open side is there. It's towards the edge of the metal. Come and have a look, guys. So you know. So see, that that's the gap there. That I'm then gonna come take a close up because I don't know if this is actually gonna pick it up. <laughs> Up against the side. Against the actual metal, yeah. yeah. Can you show that up in the camera? Yeah, 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 I will. I will. Let's be all careful to take notes. I don't know what we did without the cameras on the phone, guys. Mm. <laughs> this is stuff we had to memorize a lot. <laughs> well, since you carry C, you use the pencil. I know, but it doesn't, you know, okay, I still don't know how I feel about technologies, but it doesn't it just take so much time with this? Click, done. Okay, to the camera, so people can see. Can you, can, can you see the camera? Can you see? Yeah, don't go any closer. <laughs> I just want to see if people can, can people see? What? Look at that, look at that. Yes? Yeah, that'll work. That'll work, okay. Right in the middle, so it's like <laughs> I mean, contact me anytime for any detailed information. <laughs> so I'll put that there. The plug here as well. See, won't wait. See, that's gonna clear my shoulder away. <laughs> this is gonna bubble. Interesting to see how little blunt you put on your piece, mm -hmm. and I see other people just take it off. No, don't cake it. Don't cake it. It's gonna be frosting a cake, and then just put it on. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I suppose you know a lot of this. I've noticed in the years of teaching, it's um, we do a lot of these things. I did that at the beginning as well. It was like to make sure it's gonna work, okay. you know, and then the more because. I was the biggest hater of soldering ever. That's why I developed a whole set of cold connections <laughs> through and focus on the cold collect connections. And then, you know, as, as I, it's, I, it, what actually helped me was changing to um, a different torch. Like I really struggled with the normal big torches. And then I started to work in a studio that had a, had a little smith. And within three months I was soldering chains and I had no problem. So, you know, sometimes it comes down to finding the right tool for yourself. And then with the flux, I've not noticed, you know, with, with time, that, that that was one of the reasons why I was struggling as well, that I was applying too much flux, and then I was being a bit, you know, afraid of the fire, so then it was bubbling a, a, away, and I was like, oh my God, it's moving out of space, and I didn't want to put my fingers in there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> as in, you know, with the, with the solar, even with the soldering pig, because I've been so trained, don't play with fire. And so gradually I... I Learn that you know the the less flux because you just really need the minimum amount of flux for the solder to run. It it doesn't need to be wrapped up. So the less flux you've got, the better for you. Uh, as long as you've got it evenly covered, even for annealing, you know, if you're using flux um, as a, as an um, indicator for annealing temperatures, you know, how it goes bubbly, uh, powder white, bubbly black, and then clear. Um, if you've got a lot of flux, you can actually really overheat the piece before it goes clear. You know, before the the, the amount is got a thick layer, the, the piece will already overheat before, you know, and so, so you already sort of damaging. So, yeah, less is more. I will conclude that. Okay, let me get a nice two pieces of this medium solder. Oh, I 
guys saying to yourself before you use it? Not always. It's just these two bags came out with the, came out of a bottom drawer yesterday and they're a bit oxidized. And so because they've been oxidized, I just want to make sure that, you know, the surface is nice and clean because, you know, solder is a very finicky thing. And if it's oxidized or if the pieces are oxidized, it just doesn't run. Me a lot of times, but they're not watching you, we're watching what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just looking at your hands. <laughs> 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 because I mean, people, people don't make me the, the watch part, it doesn't make me the nervous. You know? I, I run a lot of workshops, it's not like this is the first one for me. Just something about. <laughs> no, a good girl. Nine o'clock on Friday. All right. No, Gerard, can I please ask you for your kind of Thank you. Thank you. Do you uh, guys all use this sparkler? No. no. Matches, yeah, matches, lighter. I mean, I think the lighter is bit, bit, uh, um, electronic lighter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I must say, you know, lighters are a bit risky because you know they, they, you know, sometimes if you don't quite know, not notice where your flame is, it can explode. Okay. So the new electronic zippers. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I get it now. Alright, so ultimately for this job, guys, you will need to focus on um, heating mostly the metal. Okay, I'm just going to move this solder a little bit closer. That is simply because if you focus on the chip, because the chip is going to be picking up heat from the metal anyway. And um, if you've got the, if you focus on the chip, all of the solder will just run to the chip. So see that's from starting at the bottom here. Things <laughs> bubbling away. It is not beautiful to watch the colors. It can be done proper. Okay, that's a nice lead. It's so much. Through the whole journey. Mm -hmm. That's one nice look. Oh, your hair. Did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that was fast. Good <laughs> 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 try. Okay. Maybe it's just this break. Yeah, well, maybe it's, I, mean, I think it's I think it's good, but you know, normally you would have an extraction unit so you probably wouldn't smell this. Because it, you know, gets sucked away. We're not quite set up for solving here. Wait, what's this soft break? That's a soft jigging So the other that would be... Design actually have pins put into it. So I was just going to say, um, 
um, that's that's perfect for hinges because sometimes I help my um, to hold the tube in place by popping two pins um, behind the tube to hold, yeah. hold it in place. If you're using a charcoal block quite often what will happen is you'll actually crack it as you're putting the pins in or it'll mm -hmm. take a chunk out of it. Same with the magnesium. The magnesium block's a little bit better for that. But the magnesium block tends to get craters from the heat. Mm -hmm. Whereas a soft jigging block, it stays still fairly quite, fairly flat, but the fibrous material mm -hmm. allows you to put pins in without damaging it. <laughs> Especially, like, it's so smooth for people to use me, so tidy. Perfect because we're not going to be soldering those pieces together. Okay, so. Have a look, this is where I can now um, thread the saw through the gap there and cut out the middle seg segment. And whilst you're having a look, I can cut a segment of this for the center. Progress and stuff that you've taken. Feel free to tag it in the comments of the video that'll be on Facebook. And that way people can see it because quite often you don't see the close ups with the camera the way we've got it set up. And it'll help everyone all around Australia and everywhere else is watching. Did you say all around Australia? Okay, well, that's probably why I'm feeling like a bit. <laughs> this might be actually my first when it comes to that. Speaking of photos, it's a lovely team photo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the lady was so good, you know what? Um, no kidding, because I really dislike being taken pictures of. My poor parents don't have a good picture of me on movie, but and she just she was she was able able to work it in such you know and just orchestrate the whole team in such a playful way that you know it, it just felt like a breeze. It's like oh yeah, for you I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though some of the positions that she asked us to be at, you know, in photos they look great, but you know, in real life it was like, <laughs> <laughs> really? And then it looked that good. Anyway, she clearly knew what she's doing. Where's the shift? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just like I didn't lose it again. Those washes.
Not really. No. Okay. There is another lady that um, I think she was more in that way. But yeah, the, the artist that I'm. Yes? When you put the chenille on to the plate, do you put it prior to position the plate so that it's in the middle of the chenille? No. Or whatever? No. What I do though is I make sure that I sold it from the back. So when the, then the so, so on the front then it's quite nice and flat, yeah. but then the protrusion is all at the back because you can you know if you um, the, that that is something that I have learned yeah. um, that if yeah if you don't try to position it in the center of the plate, what once you lay it you will always have on one side because they both lay on the same surface, so the tube will always be on one side higher. Yeah, because it's I'm not spending the time to center it. So the only thing that I make sure of is that I sold it always from the same side. Yeah. So when I line up, mm. so so as to imagine this is this is the front of the piece with the texture. So when I solder the middle part, I would not solder from the front because then the front would be up would be rise because I was soldering from the back. Mm. It's rise. The tube is higher on this side. Have a look, Robin. No, no, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> so then, then I'm gonna cut this out carefully. Keep an eye on that tube. Can you help me, guys, please? <laughs> no, keep, keep an eye on that tube. Uh, all right, no worries. All so thank you, Gerald. <laughs> that, that's that's very nice of you. So now I'm gonna thread it on here, obviously make sure that you can see the marks. I've got the marks on that side. So that's where I've got the design upwards. Oh, no. and before I do that, I actually have to resolder because this side here did not catch. Okay, Is it the front or the back? One side. Yeah, it just didn't catch. So you know, if I cut now, it it would yeah, it's a whole um, defeats the purpose. On both sides or only, one? only one. I mean, you will notice if you attempt to do texture the conventional way on, on a steel block that it can only always be done on one side because once you hit it from the other side, it flattens the first one. Can you tell us why? If you were doing a box. So was that? If you were doing a box where you wanted to make a 90 degree hinge, would that affect where you're placing it? Definitely. No, it definitely. Yet. No, with, with the locket, it's a whole different story. I mean, you can you can do a locket with this, but it's going to be rustic locket. Because, you know, this hinge, as to say, is not, you know, um, as precise. Because, you know, with lockets, you often 
have to go, kind of have have the hinge, some part of the hinge, also sort of sitting either on inside. It depends, right, you know, it, saying, yeah. it depends on what is the locket that you're designing. I mean, this, this will allow you to um, see to create a simple lid, yes. but it's gonna be a little bit like free form. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't like wonky. So don't start with the <laughs> free, free form, <laughs> free form <laughs> sounds so much much better to me. Rustic, yes, rustic. Oh, it's got that DIY characteristic. I like that a lot. Willy nilly. Willy nilly? No, willy nilly is willy nilly. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I do get where you're coming from, Gerald, you know, because coming from a person who uses speeding tool to make rivers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the level of precision there is clearly much higher than, you know, um, yes. the level from which I operate. And um, that's okay. As I said, you know, you gotta you got to create practices that you love. So um, I'm going to go home and try that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> have plenty of broken drill bits at home for your little stuff. Yes, yeah, I do. I actually keep them because, you know, sometimes when I do copper plating, mm. I use them in a pickle. And then, yeah, they they, they good. Yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> well, look, that's it, exactly. We could, we could make like a little production line for this new riveting tool that, you know. <laughs> You don't have to tell anyone that it's made out of broken drill bits, right? Except that we just told the whole of Australia now. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> How did I figure out the seven millimeters guys? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Where's the calipers? It was, eh? Hey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, not to fall on perfection. Same tone, so you could go out and there was just someone from the other tenant who's getting on the list. 
<laughs> okay, so if you wanna have a look what happened here right now, you are fitted the piece right in the center there. So it's basically the two parts that I had there that are now holding it all nicely in line where it needs to be. And I mean, again, you know, I'm, I'm taking a lot of shortcuts today for the purpose of the demonstration. If you're working on a piece where things need to really fit together, feel free to put little notches on your pieces so so you know exactly where that center part needs to sit. You know, I just went left, right, this looks okay, looks well and centered, but you know, ultimately using a ruler or you know using your scribe to put little notches on the back of the piece um, will help you to get a result that is much more precise. Okay, and then we'll go easy solder. Yep, yep. You're not going to move the yep, other piece away to solder. Yep. Pardon? You're not going to move the other piece away to solder. No. No, that's why I work. This, this is the beauty of this method. Yeah, right, okay, okay. Yeah. What was that? Broken To keep. Yeah, yeah. See, there we go. Another thing. Oh, we're a good idea. Yeah, totally, yeah. hey. So you're soldering a lot together. Yes, and that's why with medium solder on that, I'm going to do easy solder on this. Um, say if you've got a hinged bracelet, you want to work hard and medium because those joints do a lot more work, right? So like with light pendants like that, I can get it away with medium and easy. Pretty sure that there will be some, you know, risk takers out there who will just go easy, easy, easy. And you know, that's fine. That's fine, you know. <laughs> you know, you, you, can, you can take those risks. Cut -cut. Like easy solder is less than half the strength of the actual material. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you go hard, hard, hard. So I'm just hoping, Mega, <laughs> Morgan, I'm just hoping this is not IT solder. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> Morgan had a good giggle because, you know, I'm not an anomalist and I inherited a whole box um, full of tools and there was a solder that said it's easy, right? But there were some cheap, you know, little containers with enamel and like, oh, whatever says easy, let's use it. And then Morgan watched me in the studio for like good two and a half hours going, why is this not soldering? Why is this just not soldering? And then she goes, oh, who's, who's is it? And it's like, it's Jazzy's, Jasmine's. And then she goes, well, she used to do an uh, enameling, maybe it's an IT solder. And I'm just like, right. Because, no, it wasn't, it was hard. And the H can be an I And you have nothing through there, actually. Just no. It's just, yeah, that's... Yeah, you, you know, this this method is really good for when those instances that I, as I said, say, like, if you've got nothing appropriate that can hold these chips together, like, line them up, you use the two pieces, and that jig is perfect because, you know, you can actually... And I do that, you can pin those pieces in place so they like press together. Yeah. Why I didn't bring the pins today, I don't know. It must be a special day. <laughs> Where I decided to do everything the hard way. And Gerald decided to make it easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So again, focusing mostly on the bigger piece, chip sticking up here from there. Now, as you will notice, copper actually needs to be 
Did you have much more? Mm, come on, catch me, catch me. <laughs> um, and silver, so we put copper to take the soul that it actually has to glow. Like if you've got silver glowing, that's like a, you know, that's bad news <laughs> when you're soldering. I don't want to put this one. No, and I'll go explain why. Because I've got the, the texture. Yeah. I've got the texture in there, and I just want to keep the color. If I put it into the pickle, the yeah. color will be gone. Yeah. Use your brass brush. <laughs> Pardon? You nearly sat on your glasses. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> So I will pickle. Because now I have to. But yeah, with the. Ooh! With the colors. It's <laughs> a bit warm. <laughs> with the colors on the copper. This is the thing that, you know, if it, when it gets heated, it obviously gets oxidized. And then if you just take a fine sandpaper, it works really well for the textures. Again, one of the um, sort of rustic finishes you can get with copper. It looks even better when it's polished. <laughs> it's probably the only time where I don't finish with a brass brush. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, you can get. Um, I, I would just, if I want to keep the colors, I wouldn't use properly, but would use um, rouge and just shine it up because um, the rouge with the waxes that are in it really brings out the reds that you've got um, at the bottom of this. There you go, guys. <laughs> and I mean it depends like say I, I probably would not use this exactly for wearable pieces this it's just simply unless you want to put a lacquer on it or something it's because um, yeah with if you wear it the copper just oxidizes so fast that 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 whole beauty um, of the um, color gets lost but yeah lockets little you know keychains or anything where it's not going to be pendants probably for pendants earrings i wouldn't dare i think <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you would lacquer it, but you know, it's just like if you've got it on earrings, it's touching the skin much more, and you know, if, if you've got it on cuff ring, that's touching the skin much more, so it will oxidize faster. Yes, you have the ring. This one? Yeah. Okay, what is it? That little thing. <laughs> Someone's still looking at it. Oh, 
I, I didn't move this one. It's blanking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I mean, if this happens to you guys as well at home, remove that stain, that solar stain, between the solar egg and the um, It's, um, if, yeah, once, yeah, remove that stain of solder before you go on re-soldering. It's just, once you solder that on, it's going to be hard to take off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, which is working so very nice with Well, that's quite good. Oh, look, it's a cheeky thing to say, though, because that is actually not true. It's only true on the day of that's you finishing the piece, because especially with easy solder, it's got so many other um, metals in it. So it will, if you leave it there, it will actually oxidize and it will, it will be a dark stain there. So it's best to be taken off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've used them before. I'm never coming back. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm with lighters. Because before I can try to light it up with that, I would gas myself. <laughs> This is not a good day. <laughs> not in front of the whole of Australia. Head <laughs> 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 of the world. <laughs> oh, this is live. <laughs> this is not going to edit. Oh, we can't edit it. No, we can't edit it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the last piece that you'll be doing today? Yes, that is the last piece. And you know what? I might just cut a corner here. And I'll show you how to rivet it on this one. Hopefully, I've got the right wire. Oh, 
Pardon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just like, oops. <laughs> no, I've it is too well. Okay, one more. <laughs> one more go. Yeah. Number three, guys. Right? Reinforces the patience is the best tool we have. No, we start to the Oh, there's that. It's harder to solve them. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do roll twice. I say you do it. Once you've done it twice, then it's. Submit. <laughs> Last time. Button. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that part was <laughs> 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 Oh, you got some of them, have you? Have 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 you got some of them, have you? I am worried that I'm not going to have enough to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for this. I will. You know, this 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 is meant to be an easy hinge. If it was silver, you don't want to come around the back. There we go. Yeah. So I can tell you what the problem was here. The problem and what solved the issue for me at the end was, because I was heating this way, I I had more heat. Because I'm a left-handed port holder, I had more heat here, so it was hotter. So the moment I turned it, so the point of the flame was uh, towards the chief, it, the heat was running there and it was done, no problem. So that is a lesson for all of us here about the direction of the flame. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at him there, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, eh? <laughs>
Pardon? You get in an accident 10 minutes before you get home, so like right at the end is when you So obviously, you know, um, if this is a finished piece polished before the everything, or do you know, remove all of your scratches, but then you can just hinge it quickly together. Where's my point? It's fire. Yeah. I don't need to take the glasses for this, but. Then you can you can use wire that's got smaller diameter than the inside diameter right, of the tube. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean this this is um once you actually get it moving, <laughs> it's gonna be. I will do something to the end. Yes. <laughs> I will do something you know, to the I end. Wait, I'm very excited about <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just look. Believe me, I'm so excited myself right now as well. This is like 10 to 12. I'm just like, yes, it happened. You know, I made it work. Just you know, with the rivets, I do like to tidy the ends um, to to get a nice, neat finish. So that's why I'm filing it. And then what I'm gonna do to the end is, I'm gonna rivet it. So I'm gonna take a nice flat-sided hammer, hold it on the on the corner of my block here, and then rivet it. Here, yeah, you, you could again, as Gerard suggested, use the beading tool because then you could be more um, space to get to it. I just hope I um, didn't discourage anyone from <laughs> doing it <laughs> with my soldering misfortune here. <laughs> but that is the thing about um, soldering, that you know, sometimes it just simply doesn't work. Voila! Oh, <laughs> Thanks guys. So yeah, you can have a look now, see the wire is spread from you know so that's that actually every one almost come out yeah. we all can let it go around and i'm just gonna take a deep breath <laughs> 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 Yes, yeah, so if you've got a smaller wire, bigger um, inside diameter of a tube, there will be little spaces in between the pieces. But you know, again, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. All of these things you can actually work into the design. You know, if you're aware, because now you're gonna go and you're gonna be aware of the fact that this can happen, so you can make it work. You know, it's a bit um, unsettling when it sort of happens unexpectedly when you put it all together and you're just like, oh. I didn't see this coming. Do you have a countersink at the end of the 
For the river. Yeah, 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 you can come to sing, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it would be right on the top knot. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, the, if you wouldn't do the counter sinking, you need to account for that with the thickness of your metal. Yeah, so, so um, the, all of these metals that I worked with today, they were quite thin. So if you want to do counter sinking, account for that so you can actually use those um, appropriate bears to, you know, create the indent to which then the rivet sit, you know, so it sits flush with the with the surface. So like, you know, counter sinking is quite hard to do um, on, you know, 0.5 and all of those sort of thinner metals. Yeah, so just, you know, if you want to do that, yeah, think, think it through prior, yeah. Prior to the actual button, a and a, a and yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it's that. Um. There's another place I go to though. Twin plaza medals. Yeah, yeah. So they they are pretty good, but they don't tend to supply in. Um, they, you know, they don't tend to supply like a any metal merchants is happy to cut out. A, twin plaza tends to sell in the whole length, but. You have to call them up. Yeah, yeah. You just have to call them up. But that's how they cost down. Yeah, I suppose. Well, the, the, the thing is as well that they 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 trade to trade a lot, so they've got sales rep. You know, so they actually. Yes. Yeah. So and because they've got sales reps on the road, it is you know still, you know, quite a valid practice to have yeah, a sales yeah. you know who can Absolutely. come and show you the product face to face is the way I like to do it I shall show you this one show me show me show me <laughs> That's um put that on a piece of wood. Yeah right. Well that that is that is very and that one will spin. Yeah. Yeah. No that yeah, that, that, that is a perfect way of using these stuff. techniques. Yeah. yeah. That's a square brass wire that I have and then I riveted that on. So yeah, I thought it looked and it was like it's a brush. It's a brush. Yeah. I like the Yes. Can hold. Can, if you're not in rush, feel free to ask me questions. I'm gonna take another. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. At the time, I didn't feel that way. Did you have? Two? Yes. I, look, I originally had the three, three washers. I will find washer number two for you. Yes, because for this look, it is just so attractive to have done that. We've had additional Queensland before, and I can get into Yeah, wash, like you know, see, washer. I would have a washer. This washer. Um, another this. So I mean, I could literally, if I would not have throw the whole that big. Well, where's your tube? In there. Yeah. There. See, so you've got your disc and so that, then the washer it, and then yeah, the tube. Yeah. Yeah. So for the tube that holds the wire. Yeah. This tube holds the wire. And you've got just the washers between the discs. Yeah. Oh, okay. And in front, just the greatest. So, it, so they're more like spaces yeah. in this yeah. instance. And you yeah. allowed a reasonable amount of room for, for, for movement yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. All of that. The washers and the discs are on over the over tube. tube. Oh, yes. It. So it so is so I this tube. I should, I'll call this tube yeah. and this washer. This no, that's tube. Right. I've been pulling them off. Sure, sure. Cool. Thank you. Most welcome. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I'll give you my business card. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> if you want my the words you missed from? I saw a girl that was somewhere in the US. So what brought you to Brisbane? Oh, I'm okay, it happened to me too. <laughs> Like a sentence. How long have you been here? Seventeen years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Do you go back? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I had to go like like a little bit, sort of three years. Yeah. You need that. I do. Yeah. I'm so overdue already. That's awesome. You opened up a whole new thing. I've been interested. That's that's great. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. Some are. Some have got a bit of a shade.